Your story is fantastic. We had seven managers that ran from 65 to 70, and we began and ended with the same manager. Uh, it's relatively easy to start a rock and roll band, but just try to break one up. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you got publicity men, you got agents, you got their agents, you got managers, <laughs> you have all these people on down the line that won't let you break up. So it's trouble, yeah. And, and, there, were, and there were an awful lot of bands that that was true of them, far more than made money, lost money, or, or never I saw them. I guess we were unfortunate enough, or fortunate enough, to be in that first wave of groups from like 65 that had nobody else to draw on. No one yet had been as stupid as we were. <laughs> see. So now all the groups in the 70s and 80s can look at our example and go, those guys were really dumb, man. I, I, they signed away all their publishing. They hadn't written a song yet. I mean, we were really not thinking, yeah. and people should follow our example and don't do what we do. Now, now that brings me to the question about something else that's, in, that's important to, to what you guys do, and, and you've been doing it for some time. That is, do you go to high schools? Do you go to colleges? Tell us about that. Yeah, we do. Uh, well, we have been uh, actually for about a year or so also writing a column uh, uh, called Music Theory 101, which also includes a lot of the lectures that we have been involved in at colleges and high schools, basically the communication classes. Coming out of high school, we felt going back to the high schools and recommending to the art, music, uh, drama, drama and journalism departments, make them aware of diversifying their careers so that they would learn that not just the importance of being in front of a camera, but all of the people that make up a mm -hmm. show, the makeup, the, yeah. uh, uh, the publicity, the the everything. Scenes, as and as well. how to protect areas. themselves legally, too. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Uh, so that they get, become aware of money management. So they can teach you how to write the song, they can teach you how to write the story, but they can't teach you how to survive out there. Yeah. That's Where to different. put your money so that when you turn... Uh, I have really a daughter good. in college, I have a daughter in junior high, I've been in the PTA for uh -huh. the last nine <laughs> years. I mean, yeah. uh, I cook burgers that uh, you're your Halloween. They're not carnival. good, though. They're overdone. It's, it's, it's... <laughs> but that, that is a... It's real important, I think, that what we've tried to do or maintain, having sung in our career and worked with Frank Zappa and John Lennon, we just did Bruce Springsteen's album, uh, the greatest hits album, Howard and I are on, singing Hungry Heart. You know, and 20 uh, years later, somebody like uh, Susan Seidelman finds a song like Happy Together and puts it in Making Mr. Right, and the movie right. comes out, and it's like, we haven't done anything, folks, and now the phones are ringing, so the less we do, the better it is we are at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We've got a break right now. And we'll be right back with Night Coach Richard Mall and basketball star Daryl Dawkins. So take a little minute and come on back and see us. New Clear Eye. Whoa! All right. Now this week, the NBA uh, kicks off its second season. This is what all the maneuvering's been about. The playoffs will begin. And we couldn't think of a better man to give us the scoop on what might happen than my next guest, the Center for...